Sunday and it's leisure time on Mansfield today and as usual we dip into the garden and we welcome our gardening guru Mel Walker. Hello Melanie. Hello Jeremy, how are you? I'm absolutely wonderful. What's this guru thing? Well, I'm not a guru, I'm just a garden girl. Green fingered goddess. <laughs> there we go. That's the right title for today. Um, now Mel, you're wanting to zoom in a friend of yours. Yes. My almost twin. You're al why do you say you're almost twin? Well, because she's, she's born two days after me. And we've both been in television for most of our lives. And that's where I first met her. And then we both got into gardening at the same time, which is like Are really weird. Are you kidding? Weird. No, seriously. All of this. It is twin stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the form. And we even have the same publisher. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. They like, they like <laughs> garden girls. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, let's zoom in Jane Griffiths from... Uh, Hello, Jane's everybody. Hello, Jane. Thank you for taking time out to join <laughs> us from Jane's Delicious Superfoods. Right, Mel. You see, Jane, this is why I love Melanie, because I can start the show off and then go, OK, Mel, and I sit back. Yeah. And she takes over. I just take over. What can I say? <laughs> but Jane's used to that as well. And I love the, the fact the that he says he loves with us me. Will be the difficulty with us, you wind us up, Mel and I, and we will start talking and we won't stop. So just put a break on us, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. You may, however, ask her the first question, if you like. No, I'm not going to. Oh, he's not going to. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I will do it then. No, of course. Jane started, how many years ago was it when you published your first book, which was Jane's Delicious Garden? And why did you decide to do that... the book in the first place? Uh, I started... Well, Jane's Delicious Garden was published in 2008. I'm having to think now, you see, you're putting me on the spot. Um, published in 2008. Um, and in fact, this book, Jane's Delicious Superfoods, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really planning another book. I was walking with a friend in the park, walking our dogs, and she suddenly stopped and she said to me, oh, I've got a great idea for you, uh, a book for you to write. And I said, what? And she said, Jane's Delicious Superfoods. And I, do, I stopped me in my tracks because I could just see it. I could see the whole book. I could see the contents. I could see what I wanted to write about. And the roots for this book do go back all the way back to not only Jane's Delicious Garden, but all the way back to when I started growing my own organic vegetables, herbs, fruit, etc. in my garden. And part of that understanding of my, my garden and understanding, starting to learn about things like beneficial soil microorganisms and how toxic pesticides are and how bad chemical fertilizers are for my plants, part of that journey was starting to look at the food I was eating and what was in it. And the same lessons that I was learning in my garden, I started applying to my own body. I started exploring what was in my food. I started reading labels. Um, and, and part of the journey of growing your own food is then obviously cooking your own food. And for me, there's no scientific definition of a superfood. Uh, but for me, it's, it's, it goes back to literally creating our food from scratch and not relying on fast food, not relying on prepackaged meals that are full of salt and who knows what other these, you start reading those labels and you just see all these ingredients you can't even pronounce and you start researching what they're doing to you. And the first step to taking control of your health and just, you know, even undoing a lot of damage that you might have been doing is to just start making some of your own food from scratch using wholesome, nutritious ingredients. And, and that's what this book is all about. What, what, but what makes a food a superfood? I mean, I, I know about a lot of the things like, I mean, some of the things that African and people see growing on the side of the road, like ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is like also it's a superfood, and I know that uh, a couple of like herbologists, what would you call them herbologists, would actually push those as something that you should really be eating. It's like elderberries, okay? Um, are those all superfoods, or what makes it a superfood? 
Well, for me, yes, those ones that you've mentioned definitely are superfoods. Ashwagandha, the, the, the root of the ashwagandha has been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, and it's it's a, a really good herb for our immune system. Uh, but, you know, when you start wanting to define something, is this actually a, a superfood? Um, if something is super nutritious, if it is packed full of a range of compounds that are beneficial for us, then it's a superfood. And, you know, eating eating things in their, I'm not saying raw form, but in their closest to their natural state. So, for example, something like wheat. Wheat has had such a bad rap. It's, it, it really has. But if you go back to the history, you know, the history of, of, of milling and the history of industrialization and mechanization. And you see how much that has affected our food and how processing it has taken all the nutrients out of it. So we now, our, our food landscape is dominated by very unhealthy, very, very, very white, refined flour which is not good for us. But if we go back to eating bread made using uh, wheat that is literally harvested from the air around us, i.e. using a, a natural sourdough starter, and we use bread that is milled using methods that retain all the nutrients, i.e. stone milling, then that mm. bread becomes healthy for us. So it's it's about how we eat our food. It's not just what it is. It's, it's yeah. and the ingredients in that food, the, the compounds in that food, also something like turmeric, for example, everybody is going on about turmeric. Turmeric I is going to ask you latest. about that. <laughs> because <laughs> during lockdown, if you managed to get to the shops and you wanted to buy some turmeric just to grow, there was none to be had. Mm. And ginger, everybody just suddenly went completely ginger. mad on growing ginger and turmeric mm. at home. And I'm, I'm so glad now that the bulb producers are actually bringing turmeric out that you can buy it like that because it, you go in to try and find turmeric in a shop and you're not going to find it. Why is it such a thing? Is it just a faddish thing or, is, or do you think that more people are becoming, because of COVID, a lot more it's, aware it's, of what they're putting in? Hmm. Hmm? Would you say, did you? Well, most definitely. Uh, no, I, did, I didn't go on to turmeric, but um, I, I think that because of COVID, a lot of people started cooking at home mm. and started looking mm. for fresher stuff. My, my only problem with it, and both, both of you could chip in here, is that, you know, so often we think we're eating the right things. We think we're doing the right things. Um, but then you find out down the line that, uh, I'm trying to think of an example here. Uh, okay, so instead of having a piece of, of meats that may be full of steroids, mm. I'm going to have a freshly grilled piece of fish with a green salad. Lo and behold, I find that the piece of fish that I've just Might eaten full of mercury. is full of mercury. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, we're, we're, how, how do we get out of this rut? Grow your own tilapia in your pool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jeremy, that, that, that's exactly exactly it. Um, you know, to answer your question about uh, just specifically on on the fish with with mercury, um, is oily fish is the fish that is much better for us. But the decision there is to make an informed decision. You've now learned that ah, if you eat the the further up the food chain a fish is, the more the oil will absorb the oil in their bodies that is good for us. On the one hand, it's also bad for us because he has gone and absorbed all these toxins because it's further up the food chain. So the trick is to eat smaller oily fish, things like sardines, and to eat smaller portions less often of the bigger fish higher up the food chain. And in this, it's it's a, a case of knowledge is power. The information the information is out there and. Um, uh, it's such a morass, though, to go and wade through to find the, 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 that bit of information. You kind of give up. So that's what I've done in this book. I talk about fish. I talk about sustainable fishing. I talk about the toxins in the toxic metals in the larger fish. And I hopefully can help 
Uh, this my book is not dictatorial in any way. I don't believe in diets. I don't believe in you have to eat this and you're not allowed to eat that. I believe in um, encouraging people to make informed decisions. And all my books have been along those lines. I, I don't want to become the guru who stands up there and says, "Oh, everybody follow me, doing it my way." No, we mm-hmm. we are all, the, the the microorganisms in our guts are as unique as our fingerprints. Each of us are unique and each of us is going to have different dietary requirements and slightly different. So you need to get to know your own body. You need to understand what works for you. And this book hopefully is a step towards empowering somebody to be able to do that. Are you also teaching people in this book how to grow all of these things or would they have to get your companion books to be able to do that and then get Jane's Delicious Kitchen to be able to cook them all as well? Or is it all in one book? (laughs) It's all in one book. Um, Wherever possible, I have included information or uh, not possible, practical, I've included information. I mean, I started growing turmeric 10, 12 years ago, and I've got masses of turmeric in my garden. Um, so I teach people in the book, I, I, I give advice on growing. Uh, again, uh, we're practical. For example, the Brazil nut, we can't grow. It only grows in the, the equatorial forests of South America and the Amazon basin because it has this incredible link to its environment where only one specific bee can actually pollinate it. So if you try and grow it somewhere else, it's just not going to get pollinated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where possible, yes. And, you know, none of us are going to grow a baobab in our back garden, but, you know, we, we actually could because, the you know, in Australia, the, the indigenous people of Australia actually grow baobab as a root vegetable so, and that's in the book um and then also yes on how to use it i give advice on on each entry i give advice on um growing it what's in it why is it beneficial for us mm. and then how to use it so going back to the turmeric again it's a very good example because um turmeric it, it it's made up it's been most beneficial it's beneficial compound is curcumin And for our bodies to absorb curcumin, we need to take in another compound called piperine, which comes from black pepper. That slows it down and it allows our body to absorb it. It also is fat soluble. So you have to take it with the fat. And it also benefits from being heated. So all those things, if you just take a teaspoonful of turmeric powder and your orange juice anymore in the morning, you're just going to be peeing out. Yeah. turmeric pea you yeah. know um so that's where in the book i explain this and i and i and i give examples of how i give an idea of how you can actually incorporate healthy turmeric into your diet every day by using um turmeric paste which is a, a, a you know you heat it you mix it with an oil and you mix it with black pepper and then you do it once a week or once or two weeks or put some in the freezer do it once a month and then you've got it you make it easy hmm. no where is the book available and how can people get their hands on it? Because we're running out of time. Before we started this conversation, you said to me, Melanie and I can run away. You may better best run us in. I'm now reining you both in officially. Okay, yes. Well, my book is available at all good bookstores. It's been um, from the 1st of September. It'll, it's already on, on online. Um, I have it available on my online shop. It's uh, Jane's Delicious Shop. And uh, it's going to be pretty much nationwide within the next week or so, within this week. It's, um, it's, it's out there. Go and get it, James everybody, and delicious, get healthy. Jamesdeliciousshop.co.za. That's, that's, was it dot com? That's it. Co.za. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Jane Griffiths, thank you very much for joining us on The Gardening Show, which became more like a cooking show, which became more like a, a medical show. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what's nice about gardeners is, though, is we know everything. <laughs> Don't mess with gardeners. We really, we know. We even know what poisons we can get from what plants, and you'll never see it in your body, so be exactly. careful. Yeah, the apothecary's garden. <laughs> Jane, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Mel, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. We'll see you again next week. Yeah, yeah, next week. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well on Mansfield Today. Bye-bye. Bye.